Fantastic news for low-income seniors receiving SSI and SSDI. A stimulus check for $2,000 is on its way. This video will explain who is eligible to receive the payment and when it will be deposited into their bank account. We will review the restrictions for eligibility, including income limits and any others that may be applicable. On top of that, we will give you pointers on how to avoid unnecessary delays in receiving your payment. Keep an eye out for more information about how this financial boost can benefit you. It's part of a major effort to alleviate financial hardship for some of the most needy individuals in the United States. An additional batch of stimulus payments will be sent to low-income seniors who are receiving SSDI and Social Security Supplemental Income SSI. Millions of Americans have been fighting rising prices and the continuing economic effects of the COVID-19 outbreak this $2,000 payout is a welcome relief. This development aims to provide targeted economic support to a demographic that frequently has substantial financial difficulties. Some of the most important government programs that help low-income people are Supplemental Security Income SSI and Supplemental Security Disability Insurance SSDI. Cash support for basic requirements is provided by SSI, which is funded by general tax revenues, while benefits persons who have worked and paid Social Security taxes for a sufficient period are paid by SSDI, which is funded by payroll taxes. While these programs are essential, those who receive them sometimes find themselves struggling to satisfy basic needs, particularly when faced with economic downturns or increasing inflation. A larger effort to give targeted assistance to individuals most in need during these difficult economic times includes the recently announced $2,000 stimulus payments. The goal of this one-time payment is to offer immediate financial relief to low-income seniors with receiving SSI and SSDI. This payment will not be considered income for Supplemental Security Income SSI or any other federal benefit program, so beneficiaries can get the most out of this extra help without worrying about losing their current benefits. While many people who receive Supplemental Security Income and Supplemental Security Disability Insurance are eligible for this stimulus payment, not everyone is. Being a citizen or qualifying resident, having an annual income below a specific threshold decided by the Social Security Administration, being a current recipient of Supplemental Security Income SSI or Supplemental Security Disability Insurance SSDI, and not being claimed as a dependent on someone else's tax return are all requirements for eligibility, because this package is tailored to assist low-income persons inside various programs, the income level is an important consideration. Although the specific income levels are not yet known, they are anticipated to be consistent with prior stimulus payments and other government assistance programs. The full $2,000 payout is expected to go to those earning less than $75,000 per year, according to speculation. The income barrier might be set around this amount. The barrier for married couples filing jointly might be approximately $150,000 per annum. Those with incomes above these levels may also see a drop in their payment amount over time, with the possibility of a complete elimination at higher income levels. Many qualified recipients are anxious about when they will receive their stimulus payments. Although specific dates may differ based on personal situations, the government has laid forth a broad schedule for the disbursement of these monies. Uh, we anticipate that in the next weeks we will finalize the eligibility requirements and then initiate payment processing. Initial direct deposit wave is expected to take place within six to eight weeks of the initial announcement and all payments are expected to be completed within three months of the first payments. The $2,000 stimulus checks will be distributed using various methods including direct deposit, direct express cards, paper checks and economic impact payment IAP cards, even though direct deposit is usually the quickest option. There are other ways for people whose bank accounts aren't on record to get their money. To avoid any delays, recipients must keep their preferred payment method and contact information current with the Social Security Administration. How this stimulus payment may influence other benefits is a common worry among those who receive SSI and SSDI. Thankfully, other federal benefits will be unaffected by this stimulus package because of how the government has structured it. For the $2,000. Payment will be exempt from resource restrictions for 12 months after it is received and will not be considered income for SSI purposes. Those who get the cash will have an entire year to spend them before they may lose eligibility. Also, other government programs like SNAP, Medicaid or housing assistance or SSDI benefits should not be affected by the payment. Although recipients are not limited in their spending of the $2,000 stimulus check, they should think carefully about how this lump sum can help them out financially. Some examples of what should be considered are meeting basic necessities, eliminating high interest debt, establishing a rainy day fund, buying what is needed, paying for accessibility upgrades to one's house, or taking care of long overdue medical bills. There is a possibility of fraud involving recipients, as there is with every substantial government payment. Knowing how to protect oneself and being alert to such frauds are of the utmost importance. The following are warning signs, requests for personal information, claims to speed up payments, discussions of fees related with obtaining the stimulus, and unwanted communications purporting to be from the government. 
you won't have to pay anything to get your stimulus check and the government won't even start talking to you about it. More general conversations regarding possible policy changes in the future and continuing assistance for SSI and SSDI recipients have been prompted by this stimulus package. Some of the subjects being discussed include potential changes to supplemental payments, changes to the payment systems of SSI and SSDI, revisions to asset limitations, incentives for work, support services and healthcare. Staying updated about potential changes that could affect your SSI and SSDI benefits is critical for your financial status while these conversations are ongoing. Finally, while a major step toward helping some of the most helpless people in our nation will be the $2,000 stimulus checks announced for low-income seniors receiving supplemental security income and supplemental security disability insurance. This one. This time donation provides much needed help and acknowledges the specific financial hardships these individuals are experiencing. Prospective beneficiaries should monitor the rollout for updates regarding eligibility requirements, payment schedule schedules and other important information. While this stimulus program is a good reminder of the need of social safety nets and our shared duty to help the most vulnerable parts of our society, it also shows how important it is to find permanent, all-encompassing ways to help the elderly and people with disabilities maintain their financial security. It is vital to think about the larger social and economic effects of this stimulus package as we explore its ramifications further. Not only does the $2,000 injection help the recipients, low-income seniors and disabled individuals, but it also boosts local businesses. People with low incomes are more likely to spend their extra money on essentials, which means more money for local companies and maybe more economic activity overall. The specific difficulties encountered by the elderly and others with physical impairments in our economy are being more acknowledged, and our specialized strategy for economic stimulus reflects that. As a result of living on fixed incomes, many of these people are finding it increasingly difficult to meet the rising costs of living, especially in sectors like as healthcare and housing. Even though it's not a permanent fix that $2,000 can give, recipients a much needed financial boost, allowing them to pay off bills, get the medical care they need, or just relax for a little bit. The stimulus reignites the long running discussion of whether or not supplemental security income and SSDI are sufficient. Despite the critical nature of these programs, critics have long maintained that users frequently get payments that are insufficient to meet even the most basic of needs. Beneficiaries' demands in the current economic climate can be better met with this one-time payment which could spark larger discussions about permanently raising benefit levels or reorganizing existing programs. It's important to remember that this stimulus won't just help people out financially right now. Recognizing their economic hardships through this targeted charity this can have a profound psychological impact on many individuals. The message that is conveyed is that society is dedicated to helping disadvantaged people and that their concerns are acknowledged. As a result, people may feel more included in the larger economic recovery initiatives which can benefit their mental health. On the other hand, we must not forget that lump sums cannot solve systemic problems. While the $2,000 payment will help in the short term, it won't address the real problems that many people who receive SSI and SDI have, like difficulty finding work, insufficient housing that is accessible, or gaps in their health insurance. This stimulus should be seen as a starting point for a broader discussion about providing comprehensive support for people with impairments and elderly. There is a chance to make government assistance programs more accessible and efficient through the execution of this stimulus package. The distribution of these funds may provide opportunities to simplify or improve the system, which could help those who, because of age or disability, have trouble understanding or navigating bureaucratic red tape. Improving the distribution of benefits across programs may be possible in the future based on lessons learned from present distribution. It will be critical to track the effects of the payments and collect statistics on their usage when they start to reach their intended recipients. When lawmakers are thinking about new economic stimulus packages or changes to current ones, this data can be a great resource. It might also be useful for figuring out how to better cater future assistance to certain subsets of people who get SSI and SSDI. Given the continued economic uncertainty that many Americans are facing, the timing of this boost is especially noteworthy. Even while the economy as a whole is showing signs of improvement, the epidemic and its aftermath have left a lasting impact on low-income people, particularly the elderly and people with disabilities. And this tailored aid recognizes that not everyone is experiencing the same level of economic recovery and that certain groups need extra help to deal with persistent difficulties. 